Hello and welcome to the Get and Set FSM Actions tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning about the actions pertaining to getting and setting variables in FSMs. I'm going to come over here to our actions. I'm going to search FSM. And you can see that in our category state machine, right, SM state machine, we have all of these actions that start with get and set. So there's get FSM bool, get FSM float, get FSM game object, and they always have a counterpart for set FSM bool, set FSM game object, and set FSM float. These actions are super important. To start understanding them and how they work, how they could be useful, let's first understand the two types of variables. First, there is a local variable. So I'm just gonna create a game object here. I'm gonna create empty, and I'm gonna add an FSM to it. Okay, so this game object, we'll call it apple. So this apple game object has an apple FSM. And on it, you could have variables. So we go to the variables tab, and if we wanted to create a float, you could say number of seeds. Okay, and now it has a float value. And we could use that, of course, if we did something like a float add and put that in here. And the float variable we can add is number of seeds. So you can have half a seed, a full seed, etc. Now this variable is only known to this FSM on this game object. So if I went over here and created a new game object and I called this tree, and I gave the tree an FSM as well, and we called this one roots, and we go to variables, there's no seeds float in here, okay? And even on the apple, if I create a new FSM and call this taste, or whatever you want, and hit edit, and you'll see that in the taste FSM, in the variables tab, we don't have that seeds float. It only exists here in the apple FSM. So this number of seeds is really only accessible and usable and even known by this FSM. Now, the other type of variables that we have are global variables. So if I wanted to, I could do a int add and I can create a new global variable and we'll call this number of stems. So you can create some freakishly mutated apple with 50 stems on it. And this number, since it's a global variable, if I come over here to the variables tab, you can see it's separated into its own section under globals. Everything under globals are available to every FSM in the project. So now if I come over to tree, it doesn't necessarily show up here, but if in here I did an int add, the int variable I can add to, if I go to globals, our number of stems shows up there. Okay, and then once we do select it, using an action, it will actually populate in our variables tab over here. But this globals is actually accessible from everywhere. And all of your global variables can be seen up here in Playmaker, Editor Windows, and then Global Variables. And this will show you all of the globals in the game. Okay, so these are the ones I currently have in here. And you can see our number of stems. So you can see down here it says, note, globals are stored in Playmaker resources, Playmaker globals.asset. So there's actually a file that stores all of these. When you make your first global, it tells you that the file has been created and this is where it stores. Globals is a file with all of these variables in it. And because it's a file, now every FSM could refer to it somewhere. Every FSM knows it exists somewhere. So not only can my tree get it from the apple, but on my apple, if I go to that taste FSM, where there's no variables in here, I could still do an int add and find my number of stems. Okay, so this number of stems being a global is available everywhere. Now, the big thing that's worth mentioning here is that everybody gets really tempted. All the beginners want to just use globals for everything. It's just easier to find them. It feels easier to make sense of if you want to add ammunition to a gun, if you want to add lives to a player, if you want to subtract health from an enemy. It seems like it just makes sense to use global because between different game objects, they could just share this one piece of information. Now, the problem with that is that it becomes hard to trace changes back to their source. And this could make for really difficult debugging and often a pretty buggy game. Globals should be a pretty sparse type of variable in your game. You could learn more about that in the best practices tutorial. Highly recommend checking that out. But for today, I just want to bring up that those are the two variables. You have your local variables that only that single FSM knows about, and then you have your global variables that every FSM has access to. If you shouldn't be using global variables for everything, 
and local variables are only accessible to the FSMs that they're in, then what are you supposed to do when you want your systems to talk to each other? That's where get and set FSM actions come in. Get and set FSM actions are kind of like letting an FSM peek over the shoulder of another FSM to copy its test answers. So for example, this tree, if I just get rid of this really quick, and I say we want a get FSM float action, we can get it from our apple. We can look at the FSM apple and the variable number of seeds. So this is sort of like an address. The game object is like the country, the FSM name is sort of like the city, and the variable name is like the name of the person who lives at that residence. So if I'm using a getFSM float, I can get this value, the number of seeds, and store it here locally in a new variable that we can call number of seeds. You could name it the same thing. It doesn't necessarily have to be named the same thing. In variables, I can also change this to number of seeds underscore from apple. Right, so you can be even more specific about it, tell it where it came from. A lot of the times though, it just works to name it the same thing. Okay, so it's gonna copy that value. It's as if this roots FSM is looking over the shoulder of this Apple game object, copying its test answer for number of seeds and putting it here on its own test paper. I'm just gonna get rid of this one. Let's just say it's gonna say, it's gonna add 50, okay? It'll do that once. And the tree over here, I'm just gonna have this run every frame just to make sure it gets it since they're gonna be both starting at the same time. Okay, I'm gonna press play. And you'll see that it gets the value. There's 50, okay? Our apple added 50 to that value and our tree is constantly getting it. Now, the thing that I wanna point out here is that this is running every frame. So it's constantly getting that value, right? So if this apple was also running every frame and adding 50 per second, or let's even just do one at a time, right? So it'll add one every second. That's basically like a counter, counting seconds, okay? adding one, one every second, and then our tree is just constantly getting that value from our apple. So if I press play, you can see it's also counting up in its own local value here. Six, seven, eight, nine. And if I come over to apple, it's at the same value, okay? If this getFSM float wasn't running every frame, it would get it just the once while the apple value kept going up. So if I uncheck this every frame, and then I just turn this on and off really quick. It gets that value, 29, but you'll see our apple is already at 36, okay? Because this getFSM float just got the value once. It copied it and stored it on its own paper. Imagine if in class, you didn't study for your test. You're looking over the shoulder of a student who did study for their test, or maybe they didn't. Maybe you're about to copy a wrong answer. doesn't matter. The point is, if they change their mind, if you look over their shoulder and you see that they wrote five for their answer. You're gonna go back to your desk and you write five. But if a moment later, they decide that's not the correct answer and they change it to 10, you're not gonna know your test paper still says five on it and you're not gonna know that their paper says 10 until you go and check again. So get FSM actions are for copying a value like that. Now set FSM actions, if I stop this really quick. First of all, I'm gonna come over to our tree. I'm gonna get rid of this FSM float. And in the variables tab, I'm gonna make a new string called name of tree. Okay, now currently it's nothing, right? The value is empty here. But if I go over to the apple and I put in a set FSM string, a set FSM action is like standing over the shoulder of somebody who is taking their test and telling them what to write in it. So imagine you're helping out a friend who didn't study for their test and you're leaning over their shoulder and you see that they're about to put their name down <laughs> and they don't know what their name is. You know what their name is. It's Joey and you tell Joey, Joey, write Joey in the name, right? So Joey writes Joey at the top of the paper, okay? A set FSM action is when an FSM is telling another FSM what its value is for whatever type of variable. So in this example, we're using this to set a string value. We could focus on, instead of using owner, we're gonna specify the game object. We'll put the tree here. And we can go to the roots FSM. And the variable that we're changing is name of tree. And here's where we could set the value. We could put Joey, okay? So in tree, it's nothing right now, right? Name of tree is nothing. There's nothing here in the value of it. But when this 
setfsm string runs when I press play, and now we go to tree, the variables tab, name of tree is now set to Joey. And you can also set it up so if it's running every frame, this constantly updates. So for example, I could press play, and you'll see that in our variables tab, name of tree is Joey. But if I come over here to Apple, and I type in shmoey, go back to tree, variables, name of tree is shmoey. Because this set FSM string is running every frame, so it's constantly tallying it. It's like leaning over your friend's shoulder while they're taking a test and be like, no, your name isn't Joey, it's shmoey. You should write that instead. Erase that, put that. No, it's not shmoey. It's actually flowy. No, it's not flowy. It's you know, you get what I'm saying. Okay, so this works for all these other values. If I type in FSM, you could do this for getting an, a whole FSM array or just an item. You could do it for getting bools and colors and enums. You can even get what state an FSM is in. You can get vector twos. And if there isn't an action for some specific variable, you could have in a get FSM variable action that lets you create a object variable, say whatever type I want, and then the object type, you could select here from all the available types that Unity Engine has, right? So you could even do cameras and canvases, audio listeners, all these things, okay? That's a getFSM variable. And then same thing with setFSM variable. And lastly, just the thing that you should remember too, is that the value you could set doesn't have to be hard-coded this way. You have this option to make it a variable as well. So if the variable is dynamic here in this Apple FSM, the name of the tree gets generated here, for example, you could set that as some variable as, you know, randomly generated name. Now whatever this variable holds will be set in the tree as the name of the tree. That's the power, that's the value of get and set FSM actions. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.